What do you tell people that come to you and say they have acid reflux? Is there supplements or herbs that are helpful with this? I, I would refer them to my website. I have a free, if they go to my free resources, I have a little booklet because uh, I'm I'm on a campaign to get people off of proton pump inhibitors, uh, Nexium and Prilosec. These drugs are bad drugs. Uh, they cause so many side effects. Uh, there are safer and more effective ways to deal with gastroesophageal reflux disease or disorder. I, I just, there's so many choices there. I like uh, alginate raft therapy. Uh, basically, alginate is a type of uh, fiber from, from a seaweed. And when you ingest it uh, after a meal, it sits on top of the food and it prevents the reflux. That's why they call it a raft therapy. You also have things like deglycerizinated licorice that can be, be quite helpful against uh, symptoms of reflux. And there's all sorts of natural anti-H pylori agents that can help uh, fight uh, uh, some of the GI irritation that a lot of people have and, uh, and get them off of the, uh, the, the PPIs. Yeah, I, I agree. That's spot on. Um, a lot of women are told uh, as they get older to go on hormone replacement therapy or bioidentical hormone therapy. Um, is, are there herbs or supplements or something that you would recommend for them? Uh, what I've personally used, um, I, I'm glad that uh, Dr. Murray brought up maca root. That's something that actually got me through some pretty rough years uh, very well. Um, so, and, and it's a very well, well-known adaptogen. So besides of what it does for the sex drive, but what I've personally used besides maca is things like suma root, um, ashwagandha, rhodiola. Um, some of these adaptogens really help to balance body chemistry and, you know, suma root was pretty pivotal, just like the maca was for me. So it's yeah. suma, S-U-M-A, and it grows in Brazil and made a huge difference as I went through menopause and, uh, and beyond here I am. So uh, magnesium can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Magnesium deficiency is very common. The average daily intake uh, for Americans of magnesium is less than 50% of their actual need. So we see you, a lot of people respond very well to magnesium. Magnesium has been shown to help with with uh, menopausal hot flashes, migraine headaches, poor sleep quality. So it has a lot of benefits. As far as herbs go, uh, black cohosh, uh, particularly a brand called Remy Femin, very well recognized. I like, uh, there's a Korean mix of herbs. Uh, it's called Estro G. It, it's probably the, the top herbal uh, uh, recommendation based upon the scientific literature, great science behind it in, in helping improve uh, uh, that transition. Uh, Estro G is the name. So if a woman is going through menopause and she takes magnesium, suma, maca, rhodiola, black cohosh, um, estrogy, um, uh, I said maca, suma root, I said that, and rhodiola, okay, I said it all. Um, is this like nice and, oh, this is, might help a little, or is this like a, a full solution that gets them through this much more comfortably without having to take um, hormone therapy. I mean, how, how effective is this? I know well, that, that's a lot. You're throwing a lot at them. I think there's a lot more that we can do with diet uh, that, and you're, 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 you know, it's, it's sometimes taking a lot of different things isn't as good as taking a few things at a, at the right dosage. Cause a lot of times when people start taking a lot of things, they're not getting an effective dose of any of them. So it's not uh, necessarily going to provide a massive benefit. So uh, um, but the, the, to answer your question, can menopause symptoms be dealt with effectively with natural measures? Absolutely. This has been shown with any of these individually, uh, combining them. Yes, you're going to, you, you should, you should have, uh, uh, you know, really good resolution of, of those symptoms. Yeah, okay. I completely agree. Okay. Um, do you have anything else you want to add to that, Jane? Um, 
I think what I noticed for myself is I did, I didn't take all of those at once. I did rotate in and out of different things. Sometimes I was taking a couple and just as, as the years kind of went on and things would change, I, I would, I would discover something new and I would keep something in. And so I've used all of those and I still continue to, to use them now. But I, what I really noticed is that if I, if I maybe drank too much alcohol or my diet went off a little bit, then some of these symptoms would come just flowing back and the whole, you know, exercise, all the lifestyle things, this, the stress management, um, those, those layers can't be missed. Uh, you know, you can throw a whole bunch of herbs and supplements at, at, at it, but you, it, once you get the lifestyle things clicked in, actually it's a really good motivation to click those lifestyle things in. At least it was for me. Okay. Um, if someone came to you tomorrow and they said, um, I've been overweight for my whole life and I've had enough. There's this new diabetic drug. It's called a Zempec. I'm going to go on it tomorrow. Um, do you have any advice for them? Is there an herbal or supplement approach? If they said, I am hell bent on doing something. I do not just want to do diet and lifestyle. It hasn't worked for me. I'm not willing to make the dietary and lifestyle changes I need to. This is an easier way, the Sozempic. Do you have another, an herbal or a nutritional supplement or something that's equivalent that they could use to achieve weight loss? Well, for, first of all, uh, I would caution them against this approach. This approach is, is uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's going to, we've had, <laughs> we've had major issues with FDA approved uh, weight loss drugs. And, and we uh, are going to, this, this one could be the worst of uh, the bunch. Um, and that's saying, that's just saying a lot. So I, I wrote a, a recent article, you know, looking at these, uh, these GLP-1 uh, 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 drugs, uh, agonists, uh, I explain how these drugs work and why it's ridiculous to be thinking this is a good thing. Uh, GLP-1 is something our body makes. It, it enhances the action of insulin. It promotes weight loss, but it's broken down almost as soon as it's made. This, these drugs, they, they basically uh, potentiate uh, GLP-1 for a week at a time, a single injection, a week at a time. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna be shown to be beneficial, in my opinion, it's because it's it's so contrary to the wisdom of the body. The body has a reason why this compound is broken down almost as soon as it's made. There are natural ways to increase GLP-1. I ex explain these in, in my article. Uh, I, I mentioned PGX earlier. I think uh, uh, this is really the, the best natural approach for weight loss, for blood sugar control, um, and it's very, very safe. Uh, what it does is, and it, as it relates to GLP-1, GLP-1, this, this uh, hormone-like compound that these drugs are agonists for, uh, this is a compound that's made in our body by cells that line our gut called L cells. And PGX increases the number of L cells and the amount of GLP-1 that, that they release. But, uh, you know, this is done in a, in a natural, uh, from a natural standpoint, and it's not, you're not having permanently raised elevations of GLP-1. There's also the cost involved the fact that we don't have long-term studies and the fact that we know that as soon as someone stops taking these, these uh, drugs, they get rebound uh, weight gain. So these drugs are associated with significant risk uh, <laughs> and uh, they, they are not a long-term solution. Yeah. I, and I wouldn't just throw herbs at somebody. There's deeper things happening. You know, there's emotional, um, emotional trauma, there's emotional, it's, if someone comes to me and they're that desperate, they say, either give me something or I'm going to take this drug. Um, that's, that's not the kind of person that I'm able to help, unfortunately. 
Okay. Yeah. Yes. Again, these these synthetic forms of GLP one, they are active for a week at a time, and uh, the the natural GLP one that our body makes is active for for less than than thirty seconds. So, I just I just can't see this uh, ending well. I think that we're going to see uh, once a large number of people are on these these drugs for a long period of time, we're going to get uh, a real answer in terms of how safe they are. But uh, again, the FDA has had a terrible record when it comes to drugs for weight loss. You know, FenFen comes to mind. It it just it was a disaster. I think this is going to be a bigger disaster. Hey, can you tell me what what is your exact list of supplements or herbs that everyone should take? I know everyone's individual. So what are the basics that you want to make sure that everyone supplements or herbally is taking on a daily basis? Uh, personally, I, I take cayenne pepper every day. I think that's, uh, there's so many benefits to cayenne. It's a humble little herb. I also take um, a turmeric with a little bit of black pepper in it. I take a turmeric every day. And I also have been doing daily CBD. So th those are my three, you know, I have some other things I take um, yeah. as far as zinc, vitamin D, depends on the time of year with the vitamin D if I'm able to get sun. Um, I do a magnesium and a potassium. Uh, those are probably the ones that I don't ever skip. I travel, I travel with all of those. We we ha we all uh, have uh, biochemical individuality, but there are critical nutrients that are essential for our body to functional function optimally. Uh, so uh, these uh, essential nutrients include you know vitamins and minerals uh, and essential fatty acids. So everybody should be taking a high potency multiple vitamin and mineral formula. This serves as an insurance policy that you're giving your body all of the building blocks for health that you need from a micronutrient standpoint. So high potency multiple vitamin and mineral formula, so much data on vitamin D right now, get your vitamin D levels checked. If you can't do that, take uh, somewhere between 2000 and 5000 IUs of vitamin D3 per day, very important. I think everybody should be on some sort of uh, uh, high quality, uh, long chain omega-3 fatty acid. It can be an algae source or a fish oil, but get a thousand milligrams each day of EPA plus D DHA. So it's combined a uh, thousand milligrams per day will give you the protection that you need that will show benefit in reducing your risk for having a heart attack or stroke, as well as reduce the risk for uh, developing one of the major forms of cancer, skin, lung, uh, colon, uh, and, and breast and prostate. Uh, fish oils are, are, have been shown to be helpful in those areas. And lastly, I, I believe in the power of uh, these, these flavonoids. Uh, I talked about them for uh, almost two hours uh, today, um, but take a good flavonoid rich extract. Grapeseed extract is, is, a, is, a, is probably the most cost-effective where you get the biggest bang for the, for the buck but some sort of flavonoid rich extract or polyphenol such as curcumin, or you can do a, a super greens drink or some sort of plant-based broad spectrum antioxidant, it'd be very, very helpful. So those are my basics. High potency multiple, extra vitamin D3, high quality fish oil, and a good broad spectrum plant-based antioxidant. As far as uh, getting herbs, uh, yes, my diet is full of herbs uh, and spices. And it's, they're, they're great to use on a daily basis. Uh, and think of them as being concentrated vegetables and fruits. So you gain all the health benefits of the fruits and vegetables that you've heard about, uh, maybe more uh, efficiently by, by focusing on uh, herbs and spices as well. Anatina, oh, Anatina, would you like to ask a quick question? And where are you from? Hi, I'm Anatina. I'm from New York. And my question regards vitamin D. <clears throat> Does the, the long-term taking exogenous vitamin D reduce our own endogenous vitamin D? 
And what is the, the function of our precursor vitamin D? Okay, so yeah, so vitamin uh, vitamin D3, vitamin D in general is is uh, kind of a misnomer. It's more of a, of a hormone in, in some regards. We make uh, vitamin D uh, in our skin, uh, and uh, it, when this when the uh, skin reacts with sunlight, we uh, transform uh, the precursor into vitamin D3. Uh, vitamin D3 is not active. Uh, it, it gets to the liver and then it's converted to uh, 25-hydroxy vitamin D3 and then to the, to the kidney where it becomes even more active, 125-hydroxy D3, dihydroxy D3. So um, uh, in terms of taking vitamin D3 supplementally, uh, it does not have any impact on your, your skin's ability to convert uh, the precursor in the skin to vitamin D3 when it reacts to sunlight. The biggest determinant of uh, that is uh, the uh, amount of melanin in your skin. Uh, the more melanin that you have in your skin, the less vitamin D3 that your skin will make. But in, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, does there a negative impact by taking D3 supplements on your body's ability to convert sunlight into D3? No, there's no, no impact at all. Becca, would you like to ask a quick question and where are you from? Yes, I would. Thank you so much. This has been so very helpful. And I'm from Los Angeles, California. And, um, Doctor had mentioned magnesium for menopause, and that seems to be very helpful. So, uh, thank you. And so, my question is: What can one take uh, for jet lag, severe jet lag? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, severe jet lag. Uh, I mean, the easiest thing would be to quit flying, but I'm, I'm not, you know, <laughs> um, but to recover from from jet lag or to improve sleep cycle uh, function, uh, I would recommend uh, three milligrams of a special form of vitamin B12 in the morning. It's called methylcobalamin. Uh, this will shut down your melatonin secretion during the day. And then at nighttime, take three milligrams of melatonin. Uh, that This is really, a, 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 I found a great way to help reset our uh, our circadian rhythm and what happens in jet lag is our our uh, rhythm gets disturbed and it's we we have uh, altered melatonin secretion and we don't really respond all that well to supplemental melatonin uh, but i would recommend three milligrams of methylcobalamin in the morning and three milligrams of melatonin at night. And I've had phenomenal results with this. Uh, studies with uh, methylcobalamin in people with sleep, sleep, wake cycle disorder has shown extremely positive results in some people. And this will be noted by fewer uh, uh, needs of going to sleep uh, uh, during the day, so less napping, and they're more awake. They're they're more alert, and they're they have better brain function, better cognition uh, as well. So um, give that a try, and I think you'll find that you'll you'll be uh, uh, as long as you stay in one spot for a significant amount of time, your severe jet lag would would go away. Uh, Dr. Murray, how can we stay in touch with you and follow up with you after this uh, call tonight? Is there a uh, books, website? What's the best way to be in touch with you and your work? Yeah, the best way is to go to my website, drmurray.com, and uh, either Dr. Murray or Dr. spelled out Murray, drmurray.com. And if they, when they go to my website, they'll be prompted to sign up for my email. And it's it's a it's a great way to to uh, stay in, in 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 touch with me. I I put out uh, newsletters uh, that uh, um, reflect what I'm in, interested in, and uh, like one of the most recent ones is about uh, these these drugs uh, for uh, immediate weight loss, and and I just think that it's 
uh, I just, I'm not a big fan. So I think there's better ways to go. My, my website has a lot of, uh, of free resources, but you'll see this uh, sign up or this tab up here where it says free resources. I've got five little booklets that I have available for free. Um, you know, stress, anxiety, and insom insomnia, cluster and heart health, uh, Alzheimer's disease, seven uh, natural uh, keys to wellness. And as I mentioned, this, uh, this uh, little booklet on uh, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. I want people to uh, get off of those PPIs. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and Jane, what's the best way to follow up with you? I know you have a new book coming out and you have a website. So what's the best way to be in touch with you and your products and your work? Yeah, so my book has been out for six weeks now. So that's exciting. Um, it's called Be Your Own Shaman. And then uh, my website is barlowherbal.com. And I also have uh, a YouTube channel, uh, Barlow Herbal, where you know I do a little bit of... Uh, what I can put out there, but I also have an online herbal course called uh, Be Your Own Medicine Man or Woman. And uh, people can find me very easily just by going to Barlow Herbal and searching pretty much anywhere. But yeah, I have a lot of fun with what I do. And if someone has an herbal question, how do they get it answered? Uh, if they just go to customer service at barlowherbal.com, if you go to the contact us, um, you can very easily, you know, right there, just give us, a, you can give us a call. We, you'll get a live person Monday through Friday. And uh, we're, you know, a small team, but we have a lot of really knowledgeable people. Well, everybody's knowledgeable. So yeah, just zip us an email or you can even give us a phone call. Um, and Dr. Murray, do you still do, do you do phone consultations? No, I, I, uh, I don't do phone consultations. I, I try to answer all my, my, uh, my questions that uh, the, the questions that people have about health uh, in in the various books that I've written, um, and uh, we, I, I also have Instagram uh, and Facebook, and and uh, we, I do address uh, if we get a lot of questions on a particular area, I, I will address it um, in in an email. I also uh, uh, periodically will conduct uh, free um, webinars. Uh, that will give people an opportunity to ask questions uh, of me uh, on on the the subject that I that I choose to to uh, to give a, a lecture on. I've I've done lectures on well during COVID I gave it a lot of lectures, but um, you know uh, I also did lectures on brain health. I've I've given lectures on on diet and weight loss and diabetes, lots of. Uh, uh, different types of topics, and I'm going to get back into doing that uh, uh, shortly. Okay. Well, we really appreciate you sharing your life's work with us, um, and it's tough to get this information, and it gives us a lot more confidence to do these things when an expert like yourselves who spent their life studying it gives us more information about it. So I want to thank you very much for coming, joining us tonight, and I'd like to unmute everyone. So anyone else who wants to thank you for sharing all this great information can also take the opportunity to thank you. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.